the third force we're hearing that again it's, it's been in the works for some time now but what exactly is this one about the nc front in conversation with other groups came up with that statement we're trying to look deeper into this the elections is just what nine months away and this morning uh, we're joined by someone who is in the know has been at the forefront of this for quite some time professor pat utomi is also the convener of the big tent he joins us via zoom from victoria island here in lagos prof thank you for joining us uh, on the program you also in that statement you also named as one of the leaders of this third force in courts but tell us what are the parties involved in this because that statement mentioned uh, seven political parties and we've seen uh, some statements by some political parties saying well, we're not a part of this so let's clear that one out of the way first what are the parties involved we know about the labor party and a few others but tell us well thank you so very much i'm glad to join you and to <clears throat> clarify some issues uh, this is a process thing has been going on literally for years as you know, one of the big challenges with Nigerian democracy is that access has been literally blocked for most Nigerians. Access to participate has been blocked by capture of two old parties that are essentially one. I mean, I know a lot about how both parties started, and it is uh, an enterprise cornered by some people, and so they choose who they let in, who they let out, and frustrate democracy. And so we have been at the business of how to make Nigeria's democracy space a little more open by building an alternative. And this engagement on how an alternative can emerge has gone through, if you will, iterations. Now, where we have arrived at is that after the last elections, it was clear to us that one of the reasons that Nigerians reluctantly turn to these two parties, even when they want to reject them completely, is that they feel that the system is such that these so-called other parties do not have, if you will, um, what they call structure. You know, uh, that means. Look, elections in Nigeria are so typically manipulated that if you didn't have your own person in a polling booth somewhere in the boondoggles, if you will, um, on election day, they will just um, give you any number of uh, votes they want to give you and do as they please. Even if you had agents that are weak, they would bribe your agents and write as they want to. Now, to break that, it was important to find within these alternative party groupings, um, a very clear, uh, um, if you will, pattern that can have people everywhere. And so some of us began to say to ourselves, it is critical for this alternative track to be much more than a political party, it should be social movements that are represented around the country that with roots everywhere. And then very, very importantly, uh, we began to think about the labor movement because the labor movement uh, is a national spread organization. And we, I, I led a, a team to go and uh, make a presentation to the National Working Committee of the Nigerian Labor um, uh, 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 NLC, uh, Labor Congress, uh, about two years or so ago. And progressively, we've worked up to a point where Labor has very wholeheartedly become part of this initiative. In the last year, the meetings have taken place um, majorly at the head office of the Nigeria Labor Congress. And we have had amongst those who have participated in those meetings, uh, besides other social movements, we have had um, the ADC has participated in those movements. We have, of course, now had the Labour Party more reincorporated into the Labour movement uh, as part of that movement. 
We've had, I mean, some of the meetings which took place in Lagos, for example, on my birthday in February here, Senator Dan Sadao of uh, MNR, even uh, uh, Senator Kwan Kwasu, uh, 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 where we had meetings here in Lagos, and we've had several meetings with uh, uh, them too. Um, so it's a moving train, as we call it, and, and people join as we go along. The idea is to build a big tent that holds everybody who wants to see a new Nigeria. Well, Prof, just to be clear, pardon me, Prof, just yeah. to be clear, so when that statement says seven allied parties, you've mentioned Labour Party, you've, you've mentioned NRM, yeah. and uh, I think the ADC, that is three. So what, what, what are the SDP, other parties? SDP, SDP was present at the meetings. SDP. Uh, uh, SDP was present at the meetings. We've had meetings with, uh, you know, the acronyms are so many, I can't remember all of them off of my head. Uh, I think there's an uh, uh, a, APM, yeah, APM, we've had meetings with. Uh, so uh, the, the idea is, and again, if you want to go to social movements, the uh, uh, Rebuild Nigeria Initiative, the RMP, uh, the, the, all these uh, movements have been part of this Congress of Nigerian Professionals, um, you know, the New Fabian Society. All of these movements have been present at, at these meetings and have signed off or are still... PRP, by the way, uh, has been at these meetings. We, so, we have had... So they, some of them have been... Uh, I'm sorry. We've had okay, you can land on that point, Prof. Yes. Yeah. We've had Professor Atahiru Jega at right. those meetings. We have had uh, uh, the chairman, uh, 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 Pala Lubelo, at the meetings. Mm. Now, the nature of the tent is such that there is a fusion process that is a social movement fusing into some existing party. And then there is the alliance part of it. I mean, PRP, for example, has consistently said, because of their legacy and all of that, They'd like to be part of an alliance, uh, you know, uh, not a fusion or a merger. Uh, unless everybody wanted to merge into PRP, they would be part of an alliance. Okay, two quick and questions. Yes. Uh, two quick questions, pardon me, because of time, there's so much people want to know about this, uh, you know, third right. force, as it were. So you, you say that, yes, indeed, there are seven allied parties, am I right? Sorry, yes, I like parties, yes. Okay, so the fact that they attended meetings, does that mean they are actually on board? Because, I mean, the front pages today say SDP, ADC, APM dissociate themselves from merger. So it will look like, yes, maybe they were not at the meeting, the but they're not on that, board. That's where the confusion, the confusion is coming from the merger. Um, from the very beginning, even on the 6th of February, the point was made that given the INEC timetable, a merger is implausible, okay? So, in fact, it was Senator Dan Sadao who defined what was possible, given the realities of that meeting. What was suggested was fusion and then alliance. And Professor Jagger can make the point that he has consistently said what is uh, most uh, uh, probable, especially for PRP, is an alliance, an electoral alliance, which has happened before in Nigeria. That's what brought us to the 1999 election after Dr. Bunayon, for example, uh, essentially allowed a process that brought Chief Olufalae together with uh, Elijah Maru Shinkafi to go up against uh, General Obasanjo and Elijah Tiku Abubaka. So it is not a new thing, it is, and it's how Kenya tried to fix his political opposition and how Zambia got an opposition elected. So that process is what is ongoing. The critical thing is that there are alternative parties working together to be able to present an alternative track. How would you define the outlook of this alliance, specifically now if we were to go to the polls and you were to present a candidate, which party would you be adopting as the party bearing the image of this alliance? The way the conversation has gone 
uh, is for the parties to come together and pick, a, first of all, a college. And that's, that's critical in the difference we're trying to make here. We're looking at collegial leadership. Part of the problem with Nigeria is we've got this one man, redeemer, messiah, complex mindset. We say, let's hold a college accountable. And if from the various uh, co cooperating, collaborating parties, we have a college of leaders, and we collectively hold them accountable for how Nigeria travels. Because of the nature of the electoral process, only one of them will come forward as president. Now, the idea is for us to then determine that one person that goes forward from this college, but that one person must function as part of this college and be collectively accountable to the Nigerian people through this college in terms of how Nigeria gets administered going forward. Now, this conversation has taken place regularly. In fact, we tried this in 2011, and I can say this very clearly. We're having meetings in Abuja, and all the candidates of the major opposition parties, including General Buhari in CPC, um, Nuhu Ribadu and Fala Adeola, um, I mean, I was coordinating those meetings. They took place in a hotel in Maitama called Protea. Chivonfalai and I principally were involved in that process. And we were making headway. Uh, 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 Senator Brian Shekarao, coming from the AMPP, we're all part of this. We met almost daily for a couple of weeks. Unfortunately, just a few days before the elections, when we were going to come forward with the candidate, that alliance was broken by the incumbent president who failed to show up. So um, it is not new in Nigerian politics. And it is something that is necessary if we're going to save our country. Well, the question my Bukola asked you, Prof, if you don't mind uh, responding yeah. to it, is since it's an alliance, what yeah. political platform will be the face of this alliance? It will be the platform on, well, at the base platform, because labor is part of it, and, you know, the thrust is flavoring labor, uh, the Labour Party is seen as part of the basement. Uh, for a long time in the conversation, the basement party was the ADC. that was considered the basement party. Uh, but as Labour came in to provide the hooks that Labour can provide being nationally spread and engaged, uh, 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 people, and I can mention names like um, uh, uh, um, Falano, I give that it will ideologically work through if a Labour Party w was a platform party that Labour comes in through. Uh, but it does not mean that somebody who comes from ADC cannot be the presidential candidate, or that somebody who comes from uh, uh, NMR cannot be the presidential party uh, uh, candidate. So it is a function of who comes through as the choice of the college for their name to go forward that will determine uh, the party flag that is going to be uh, flown at the elections. So this loose alliance presenting Labour as the image of the party, is it recognized, is it legal under the new Electoral Act? Yeah, absolutely legal. Um, like I say, it's been um, uh, uh, done before here in Nigeria. And, and uh, the person who in those meetings consistently spoke to that as the uh, um, most feasible of the options, Ran Einek himself, Professor Tahiru Jega. So um, you're adopting Labour Party, but all the other parties under the alliance maintain their identity. That's the point. Yes, some of the parties will maintain their identity. Some chose, I, I can... I mean, make the point here that in the early days of the conversation, uh, Senator Dan Sadao of MNR was pretty uh, uh, um, convinced that he could work together with ADC almost like a, a quasi major situation. So there are different levels of fusions and alignments that make up this big tent from which we hope uh, just one person will eventually uh, uh, provide the leadership for this college that should provide a redeeming platform for Nigeria. 
I was waiting for you to uh, provide clarity on uh, which party would bear the image of the alliance, which is why some have said that why the adoption of Labour Party, which has a history of factionalism, uh, dormancy most of the time, and then during the elections, it comes out as a beautiful bride to launder the interests of politicians who had uh, failed you know, to achieve their aspiration in other parties. Well, the Labour movement says it has literally called back the Labour Party and that the new image of the Labour Party is the Labour movement. And I have enough confidence in their judgment to say that something that is doable. The only thing that you cannot uh, uh, do is essentially uh, prevent people from acting in their interests, which they will tend to do, but it is possible to reprogram. In fact, it is easier to reprogram when there isn't a steady cost of commitment. So I believe that the labor movement says to us, and most of our meetings have been with the labor movement. In fact, I had the privilege of uh, speaking to the 36 political commissions of the labor part, Nigerian Labor Congress from the 36 states of the Federation in Abuja a few weeks ago. Uh, and the TUC, Trade Union Congress, we've also had conversations with, and, and they show a commitment to this process. It is important to recognize that the uh, base value that the labor movement centrally brings to this is that it takes away this question about uh, structure. Because everybody knows that the labor movement is everywhere. And if that is structure, committed people, because they are part of the organizational frame, being available everywhere, just completely takes away the fear Nigerians have of saying, ah, well, great initiative, but do they have structure? Yes, there is structure now. And, and, and it's not just labor, the variety of movements that are fusing into this, that on their own have national spread. They were not political parties, but they are committed to seeing Nigeria move in a direction superior to where it is today. In fact, there are many of them that are scared that if we don't do this, we may be foregoing the chance to save this country for our children and their children after them. And so this is a matter of desperation. It's a Hail Mary pass being tossed here because you need to free Nigeria from where it is right now if there's going to be a next generation that, you know, makes progress. Well, Prof, just a quick clarification, something that you mentioned earlier when um, in responding to Bukola's question, you said, well, the alliance will fly the flag of the Labour Party, but it doesn't mean that the, an ADC candidate cannot field it, cannot be fielded. Is that to say, and of course you also said it's a loose alliance. So I'm wondering, just to be clear, is that to say that whoever comes on from this alliance will fly only the party of the Labour Party or they can still fly their individual parties? They, they can fly their individual party flag, but everybody queues behind them from in the alliance. Because just the logistic of switching from party to party may not be uh, easy. So whatever party flag that comes through was flying, got nominated uh, on that, can go forward, but the campaign, everybody will say, that this is the person from the big tents. This is the person from, I, I don't like the third force usage, but media loves it, from the third force. And well, prof. the Nigerian people can come on board. Well, we, the, the third force term was actually used in the statement released by the NC front. So, I mean, yeah, we're not the ones so, that adopted it. So, so, it was something so, you put so, out there first. I mean, we've had this conversation many times, but this is a peculiar personal thing for me. So, it's not a problem. Okay. Uh, uh, whenever they use third force, I go, oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, because, I, you know why? I say there isn't, there isn't a first force, second force, and then a third force. No. There is one political block in Nigeria called APCPDP. That one party. I mean, who is 
son of uh, a he was the governor. If you go to PDP, you can see how they all go back and forth. Right. So it's one um, political group. It so would the seem as though is how I prefer to see. It. Okay, it will seem as though uh, now I'm, I'm referring, by the way, to the statement released uh, by NC Front, signed by uh, Miss Bilikis Bello. Uh, it will, and it clearly states in that statement that Labour Party has been adopted. But it looks like, first, you are not really. Uh, on the same page with that statement, it looks like that, or there's been a backlash after that statement said, LP, the Labour Party, is the flag we want everybody to come under. Am I right? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I think it's in the nature of the evolution of these things. Uh, yeah, it has to be clear that uh, a significant influence of the Labour movement and the passion to have the Labour uh, Party reincorporated into the Labour movement. Uh, and there were convergences. The, uh, part of how we started these conversations was by creating, um, out of the concerned professionals, uh, what we called the New Fabian Society. Who were the New Fabians? If you go back historically to how the Fabian Society started and changed the course of uh, the travel of, of the United Kingdom, you will see how a group of intellectuals meeting during Les Affaires Britain uh, in the 1790s to see how the terrible conditions of industrial revolution would pay more attention to the people, be more people-based. Mm. And they looked at history and a, German, a, a, a Roman general who confronted the greatest army of the time Hannibal. And obviously, there was no way Hannibal would not, was not going to just crush Rome. Okay. But this general, whose name was uh, Quintus Fabius Maximus, from where they took their name Fabian Fabius, uh, used a strategy that they thought they should adopt. And that led to the founding of the London School of Economics and the Labour Party in the UK. The convergence of thinking between the new Fabians of the concerned professionals okay. and the fact that Labour had become passionate mm. about playing a direct role well, Prof, uh, led to this process. Now, th this process, you know, just as you have said, I mean, having, you know, trying to give us some background, a quick one here now. The, how, what do you, how do you respond to those who say this idea is coming a little too late in the day? It's less than one year to the general elections. I'm sorry, you were breaking up a little, so I didn't quite hear you. As, as I said, how do you respond to those who think this idea, this big tent, this third force coalition, whatever it is, whichever one you prefer, Prof, is coming a little too late in the day because it's less than one year to the general elections? Hey, cle clearly not at all at all. I'll give you the reasons why it is not late. In fact, it's too early for, for what we need to achieve. It is not late because, one, the process has been ongoing. It didn't start today. It's gone on for years, just trying to get it right. I mean, check how these things evolve with Ford in Kenya and all of that. So that's one. It's not coming uh, uh, late from part of uh, history. Second, Nigeria is in such a state. We are near collapse as a country. In fact, that Nigerians are tolerating APC and PDP having a convention is a mark of the extreme patience of the Nigerian people. Look, the focus of this big tent is on power, production, and people. If you live in Nigeria, I don't know if you live in Nigeria, I suspect you do, but quality of life has been so miserable. I mean, yesterday, my house in Ikoyi had power for two or three hours. That's probably the longest we've had power in any given day in months. Uh, Something as basic as electricity. Look, Al Hassan Ouattara has fixed it in Cote d'Ivoire. Look at how Vietnam fixed it after uh, 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 their terrible, terrible war. Um, just look at how people have dealt with power around the place, how UAE built its capacity, number of China's. And between PDP and APC, in 20 something years, we've just made it worse. Why? 
Power is not rocket science. What has caused it is greed, right. poor capacity of management, and distance from the people. If, if the people, these people care about people, they will know the kind of misery that they're generating people by the way the power electric power system in this country runs. Well, and they prof, can make one simple decision we, we that have will to, fix it. We, we have to run now, Prof, but let me put in this final question. And, and this is not the first time we've heard of a third force. We saw that pre-2019. In fact, there was that pact, as it were, the coming together of presidential aspirants. It fell through. So you, you might not understand if Nigerians are a little bit lethargic in approaching this new formation. But on a final note, it's been said that, well, there might be a spillover from the major parties, the APC, PDP, in the light of what's going on inside. In fact, that statement said that there might be an implosion within those parties. Would you be willing to work with maybe frontliners or those who may have lost out in the APC or PDP? It's not really a matter of losing out. There are many good people in APC and PDP who can't get their voices out there. In fact, we had within those two parties, the RPDP and RAPC, the righteous as some people call it, APC, Righteous PDP. Unfortunately, the first fellow who was leading the RP seems to have left the PDP uh, and moved to uh, uh, another party. But yes, there will be a welcoming into the Big Ten. That's why there will be a welcoming of people who want really to change Nigeria, who are committed to politics as as advertisement. Well, you know, uh, prof, really seriously, we have to run. We're committed to politics. Part of me, we're, okay. we're even having challenges with the connection, but I think the question has been answered that yes, indeed, you're willing to work with whoever as far as they have the interests of the nation at heart. But I'd like to thank you so much, Professor Pater Tomi. Clearly, this is an ongoing conversation. He's a convener of the Big Tent and uh, one of the leaders of well, is it called the third force now or an emerging force, as he said. <laughs> thank you so much for your time this morning.